Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Welcome to my channel, Mr. Reef Buster, and on the episode four of the Project Nano Reef, um, <clears throat> it has been about two to three months since um, this tank has been running fully. I know it's been a while since I did a video on it. I've been pretty busy uh, with the tank and some of the issues I've been having so I haven't had the time to create any videos or update you guys so, so I apologize for that um, but keep in mind going forward it'll be pretty frequent um, maybe I'll just do a monthly video event you know once every month just to update you guys so let's get get into it um, we'll discuss how the tank is doing um some of the issues i'm facing right now uh three months into this tank running tank running um and what the future holds for this um project nano reef uh series that i'm doing now as right off the bat as you can see there are some new stuff on the tank um and something's missing so my peculiar clown that i had on this tank died um but month and a half ago not sure why he came from the 45 gallon tank and he was he's been there for a while and i brought him in here i'm not sure but he passed away he didn't do so well uh maybe the perimeters wasn't good enough for him um but the wyoming clown he's lonely but he's he's still doing good since day one he's been in there for about five months now so he's doing well uh we might get him some tank mates uh pretty soon um but i have added some corals i've added um a bubble tip anemone uh, like i mentioned on my last episode um and some cleanup crews and i'll tell you why i added each cleanup crews um the, as far as the issue that I'm facing right now with this tank, I'm having a bubble algae issue. Um, those of you that are not familiar with it, uh, bubble algae is the worst kind of algae because unlike other algaes, you can scrape off and just remove it and take it out of your tank. And then, you, you know, you do a water change, it's done. Usually that's how you combat it with bubble algae. They are so sensitive and the, and the spores are inside the bubble. So you have to be very careful when you're extracting it from the tank. Um, there's not many natural ways to remove the bubble algae. And my water permit is not even that bad. Um, my phosphates at around 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And my nitrates are low, ammonia is low, everything else is low. So... I'm not sure where this bubble algae came from, but I have it, and I have to deal with it. I've tried, um, you know, scraping off the bubble algae and doing a large water change. Um, actually, when I'm doing the siphoning, I, you know, I tried scraping the bubble algae and siphoning the water right around those bubble algae to make sure the spores are sucked out when I'm taking the water out um, so they don't contaminate the tank. But still, it's not going away. Um, so leave a comment on the comments below uh, if any suggestions you might have. I have looked at some YouTube videos and I went and got myself uh, emerald crab. I heard they're good for bubble algaes and stuff so i got an emerald crab crab in this tank he, you don't see him a lot he hides a lot he does his own thing at night but um i'm gonna have to figure something out what to do with this bubble algae problem uh, only thing i can think of is to just scrub all the bubble algae off the rocks and do 100 percent water change that's all i can think of um so let me know in the comments below what you guys suggest i should do but i'm gonna talk about the corals and you know how how the tank is doing where this, this tank is going um so we'll start with the anemone that i added and a lot, a lot of you might say it's a bad move to add a rose bubble tip anemone into such a small um, nano reef um they tend to grow big and then you might be you might not have, have had enough space on the tank for him now i do get that but my i have a backup plan if he outgrows this tank i'll move him to my 45 gallon tank so that's not a problem um the problem was that the rose bubble tip anemones um the one i got you know right after i got him the first um 24 hours was very hard like he would not you know stick to the rock i put him on he would float around the first 24 hours you know i tried putting him in different crevices and try to see if he stays um so it was really difficult and eventually I left him overnight. I found finally found a spot 
And I finally, he stayed overnight and then eventually he found his own spot the next day, which I did not like. He actually dug himself to the bottom of the augerscape and he's kind of hiding in the crevices in the bottom right near the substrate. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit to show you guys where he is. He's right in the middle if you see him. Now, I don't like it, but, you know, the anemones, they have their own thing. They move where they want to, but... Um, the main reason I got him is for my clownfish, and I, I would like to see the clown to be able to host him. Um, but if he stays in the position he is, uh, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to figure something out. Um, but other than that, um, there are some new co other corals in there. Uh, I got a, there's a hammer I added, and so let's go ahead and take a look there you go so there he is if you look at it right there he's right on the bottom and i don't really like that spot he's not opening up properly because he's stuck in there and then emily and the clown can't host him because he's hiding you know what i mean and he cannot thrive so i'm gonna have to figure something out about this the rose bubble tip bring him out and try to try again you know you're just gonna keep trying until he finds a better spot to land on and stay there so and now that we're zoomed in let's i'm going to show you guys the corals that i added right there on the top um right in the middle you'll see there i added some zo uh, zoanthids um right there in the middle there i added four colonies four different colonies of zoas uh, on the right side um there is my duncan frag he's not doing too well uh, I might move into my 45 gallon and see how he does. There's a galaxy of coral right there. Um, right on the left side top, there's a hammer. Next to him, I have the green star polyp. Uh, for some reason, I don't have good luck with green star polyps. I don't know why. I cannot grow them. It's very odd. Uh, everything else grows, just green star polyps. Even my 45 gallon, I can't grow green, green star polyps. As you can see, there's a yellow coral right there on the bottom. And then I got a flower pot on the top. Now, and there's also the electric torch right on the substrate. He's not doing too well. He's not extending as much as he should. I might move him to my 45 gallon and see if he, I need him to recover. Um, maybe he's not liking the perimeters and the water, you know, water. So we'll see how that goes. Um, as far as um, cleanup crews grow goes, there is a sand shifting starfish. He's right there. You can see. His one tentacle sticking out from the sand. Um, I have two trochus snails on, in there as well. And like I said, there's the arrow crab. Um, the trochus snails are kind of big. I bought four initially, but they were so big, so I decided to put only two in the tank and put the other two. I put the other two in my 45 gallon. So that's about it. Um, and as far as the lighting goes, um, as you can see, the light is pretty well, and I'm using um, a Chinese LED light. Um, don't bash me for it. Um, you know, it was, I I got it. I got I got it for like eighty five, ninety dollars off of eBay. I think it's a Mars Aqua, uh, one sixty five watts uh, full spectrum LED. So the lighting is good. I'm happy with it. Um, he's right. It's right there. As you can see, it's got good spectrum it's got good whites and good blues um a little bit later i'll show you guys the corals and, and with the blue light on and you'll you'll see how it does how the colors pop when the blue comes on um so as far as um as far as the tank goes um future plans wise i might i'm thinking about doing some changes to this tank and we'll talk about it in a minute but i wanted to show you guys um let me show you guys what the tank looks like with the blue light on so you know hopefully my camera is doing a good job it's not that bad usually blue lights this video doesn't come out good but i'm gonna zoom in and i'll show you guys uh how the zoas are doing they're not fully open yet because i recently just added them so they are going to be enclosed as you can see there's right there it's the first colony and right above that is the red zoas right there. And the Duncan and the Galaxy is right there. Duncan, I'm going to have to move him to my 45 gallon to help him recover. He's not opening up. And those are the other two zoa colonies. 
and right above the Zoas is the, is the hammer and I might move the hammer as well to my 45 gallon for the time being and the green star polyps right there and the flower pots right there I might move the flower pot to my 40, my 45 gallon as well um, I don't know we'll think about it uh, see how it goes and here's the yellow corals right there and right underneath it is two green little polyps. Um, I'm not sure what they are. They could be part of the Duncan colony, but I'm not sure. And here's a closer look at the rose bubble tip. I mean, when I got him, he was beautiful, um, but he's he's got to be moved uh, to a better spot because I don't like him down there. Now, let's talk about the future of this tank. Now, I have been trying to be as efficient or timely with the the husbandry of this tank and i haven't been um because i've been used to not being having to maintain the tank on a weekly basis in a while and part of the reason because of my 45 gallon i have a sump refugium so that kind of takes a lot of load off of me so i can i can do a water change once a month on that tank and get away with it this one not so much and and it is pretty hard to do maintenance on it every week, especially now I got a canister filter. You got to clean the you know the filter and everything, and every, you know it's hard. So I I am pondering that I might um, end up getting a protein skimmer, maybe even a sump refugium. Uh, I'm just it's on my back of my head. I'm thinking about it. Uh, um, is a 50 50 chance i might act on it or might not um let me know in the comments below what you guys think i should do um because the weekly cleaning and maintaining is maintenance is kind of getting to me and i'm not being able to take care of the tank as much as i would like it um but i want this tank to thrive i want this to be the the centerpiece um i like my 45 gallon but seeing the nano tank um it's not perfect, but I still like it, and I would want a perfect nano tank, you know, a thriving nano reef tank. Uh, so I might be going in that direction, but I will keep you guys updated. Um, I am now, you know, now that I'm thinking about protein skimmer, I'm thinking about a sum, I'm thinking about some other stuff as well, to what to do with this tank. But I won't tell you now, I'll, I'll leave it for the next episode. Um, so that's all guys. I just wanted to give, you know, get you guys caught up with this tank and how it's doing. Uh, like I said, if you have any suggestions, uh, leave it in the comments below, uh, as far as the bubble algae problem I have and what I should do. If you have any suggestions other than the, uh, the emerald crab that I got. Um, so, and I'll be, I'll be making the next video in the next couple of weeks, maybe about two, three weeks, maybe two weeks. I'll make another video and tell you guys what I'm doing with this tank in the future. So with that being said, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Um, make sure you like the video if you like it, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, because there's a lot more coming and this, uh, project nano reef might evolve into something bigger. So stay tuned and you know happy reefing enjoy enjoy your reef tank and you know leave some suggestions for me if you like the video hit the like button and until next time guys take care bye bye